thought I'll take a break from the engine and try and get the rear springs in place, at least uh, the rear of the rear springs. So I went ahead and uh, Loctited the pins in place, hammered them home, and have temporarily set everything up and realized there's something I really should have done before I did all that. And that was actually measure that the rear tube was the right length. Um, I kind of assumed that it would be, and you can probably guess where this is going, but uh, it turns out it's not. It's actually oversized. And so what I've got happening now is the springs are too far apart. Um, I suppose at least they're too far apart and not too close together, which would be difficult to fix. But what it means is I now need to remove these pins that I just put in, uh, which probably means a bit of heat to get the Loctite to release. And then hopefully I can sort of hammer them out. Um, and then cut the ends of the tube to shorten it. Uh, it's currently 26 millimeters too wide, so I need to take a little more than half an inch off either end. And then the axle will line up, because what you need to do is get these trunnion blocks to line up with these grooves in the axle, because the axle rotates in there. Uh, aside from that, it looks like it's going to work, and it finally gives me an idea of exactly how much shorter I need to make the torque tube. Uh, because now I know where the axle is going to sit on the body. Finally have this all back together and it's looking a lot better now. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle though. It turns out that Loctite works really, really, really well. Um, I had to use heat and big hammers. Um, the first one I had to get out by putting a large flat washer on it and a couple of nuts and then using a drift and sort of punching it out that way. Uh, the second one I was able to use my, my big long steel bar, slide it through the tube and hammer on that, which made it a little bit easier. But it took multiple rounds of heating and hammering. Um, they really, really stick in there well. So once I had them out, I had to clean them up. Even just trying to clean the, the Loctite off them is quite tricky. Um, this is the stuff I was using. It's, it's bearing fit. This is the high strength stuff. It's, it's quite goopy, so it's really good at filling gaps. Um, I believe this is one of the newer ones. But I ended up using a whole bottle, and I'll explain why. I got the pins out, measured everything up carefully. Um, I wrapped tape around the end of the tubes and marked very carefully where I needed to cut. I measured and marked everything multiple, multiple times before I tried to cut anything. Uh, when I was happy, I cut through it with the, the angle grinder, sliced it off, and then to make sure the ends were flat, I used my, my mock-up piece. I slid this into the tube, and then I used my, my large drift, and I basically, this is one of the wheels from my bead roller. And I use that as a stop on this tube. So I put this in one end of the chassis and then threaded my, my rod all the way down with the stop on the end, which would stop it going all the way through to exactly the right depth. And then I was able to hand file the ends of the tube to be flush with this. And that's how I made sure they, they stayed completely square. Uh, when I reassembled it, I thought, okay, I'll... I'll Loctite it in place. I'll push one of them in, but not put it in all the way because I want to put in the second one and then adjust the spacing between them as I needed to. Um, this Loctite goes off incredibly fast. So once it's in that um, that absence of oxygen sort of place where you've got the tight, two tight fitting surfaces, it, it just goes off. And by the time I got the second pin in, the first one had locked solid, even though it wasn't all the way in. So I had to reheat one end and um, pull it out again, uh, clean it all up again, and then re-Loctite it back in. And I was literally down to the last drop of Loctite by the time I finished. Uh, that bottle's empty now, so I need to get some more. But 
that's all in place now. The measurement is spot on for where it needs to be across the, the axle. You won't be able to see it from here, but um, it's actually lining up really well now. And I can't remember exactly how high the shackles are at the front there. I think they go from, if we find one, they go on there, so have to figure out exactly where these go. Um, because of course with the the axle in there, um, you need clearance. So the chassis goes under the axle. So this has to be high enough up that the axle will fit through those trunnions. So it's looking pretty close. Um, I'll have to check that out. I can't put the axle in place at the moment because of course the torque tube's in the way. And to get rid of the torque tube, I have to undo all the brake mechanism. So now that I have this more or less in place, um, I'm probably going to use a temporary bar through the front, prop it up in the right position as I have here. I also need to make up some fake pins for the back there. It's just held with bolts at the moment, but I don't have the right, the right diameter pins, um, which I need to order from the UK. But I'll just machine up something temporary so that it's all held in the right place. I can figure out exactly where the center line of the axle is, and then I know exactly where I need to cut down the torque tube, um, which hopefully I can do myself. The drive shaft, which is standing up there, will need to be professionally shortened because it needs to be re-splined at one end, I imagine. But it's getting a lot closer to actually going, going back on its wheels. Okay, I've put in some shorter blocks because from memory the, the shackle pin is on the center line of these rivets here, which is the center line of the chassis. And that puts them, the top of the springs about there. I've got some pictures, side-on pictures that I can compare just to see where these sit. So I was worried that the, the axle is too low, or the, the trunnion block is too low, but of course I'm forgetting that these springs aren't loaded. So when the weight's on them, they're not going to be as arched, they're going to they're flatten quite a bit. So that'll actually lift them up that required amount there. At least that's what I'm hoping. I've been looking at the front cover and the thrust base again. The proper way to do this is to machine it off the front. Um, I need to take two thou off here uh, and that'll give me the, the clearance I need the end float on the crankshaft. Uh, the other thing I've had a couple of people advise me to do is you could also mill a slot across here, I guess across the whole face, um, just to help with oil getting in there. So when, when there's actually thrust on it, the little groove helps oil get into this bearing surface. But the way to do this is, uh, the best way would be on the lathe, there's no way this is going to fit in my little tiny lathe. I could also do it on the mill if I had the right sort of cutter. And I could probably do it with a fly cutter. Um, but I don't actually have one of those and I've never used one. But they're actually easy enough to make. And I mean you, you pretty much start off with something like this. This is my fake rear shackle pin. And that's pretty much the start of a fly cutter. Um, they're pretty simple. I drew up a really simple sketch of what one looks like, and there's plenty of films on YouTube showing how to make them. So I'm going to make one of those to fit in my little collet chuck for the mill. And I can at least make one, because it's going to be a, a fun little thing to make. And I can try it out on some um, scrap aluminium and steel and stuff and see if it works. And if I'm confident enough to take just the fraction I need to take off the front of my front cover, I might as well give it a try. So... I've got some, this is just mild steel bar, it's about 36 millimeter diameter, something like that. I just cut off a chunk of that, I'm going to machine that up and start making this little fly cutter thing. It's just a good little distractive project anyway, so I might as well give it a try. I've been turning down the 
the end of this little fly cutter um, down to 16 millimeter diameter to fit a 16 mil collet and I thought I'd give it a go with the carbide tools I've never had much luck with these um, so I cut it most of the way down and my surface finish is always really bad and the chips just aren't very nice I just never had much luck I know that you have to run them faster but this time I actually used the app on my phone, the Speeds and Feeds program, to figure out what speed I was actually supposed to be running at. Uh, and it came up with 3500 RPM. Yeah, look at my little lathe. Yeah, top speed is only 2800. I was actually down at 700, so far too slow. So I thought, oh well, I'll, I'll bump it up to the, the top speed I can do which on this little lathe means it's really screaming and did some cuts with the carbide and it cut beautifully and I was getting shiny mirror type finishes so apparently that's what I've been doing doing wrong all this time is you really really do need it to go fast um, it also seemed to like quite heavy cuts so I've cut that down I'm going to turn it around I'm just going to lightly machine this, turn the face down, and then look at doing the, the bits I need to do on the mill. So running the little lathe flat out, which is 2800 RPM, and I've also switched over all the change gears to get the, um, the power feed working again properly, rather than being set up for thread cutting, and that's just a pass on the outside of the steel and it comes up nice so obviously that's what I've been doing wrong all this time just not running it fast enough so I've finished the milling parts of this making this fly cutter um, I just clamped it in some V blocks clamped it in the vise it's set to about 15 degrees I don't think it's that critical um, I did try to to do the facing on the top here with one of my high-speed steel cutters. And these are the ones that came with the lathe, uh, the mill, sorry, um, and just a little kit. And to be honest, they're not very good. They're pretty crappy. Uh, so I couldn't really get a nice finish with that. I do have these carbide tip ones, so I put one of these in. And again, I had to run the mill up to the, the highest speed, which is only... 2150 RPM which is a little bit slow but it worked a lot better with this um, and then I put in a 6 mil um, cut the slot and this inside edge of the slot needs to be on the center line of the tool and then there's a flat here, which I'm going to take this out and I'm going to drill and tap this probably, uh, I'm not sure, for maybe M4 screws. I'll have to think about that. Uh, but it's the tool's made to take this quarter inch steel, so that fits in that slot like that. Um, yeah, not much to say about it. Uh, it's just a little bit fiddly finding the centers and things like that. Uh, I mentioned before, there's there's lots of films on YouTube of people making these who, who are way better at it than me. Um, make it look easy. I did clean all the chips off the mill because I've noticed all those all those real machinists on YouTube, they're, um, it's like their machines are always perfectly clean and I'm assuming their chips all smell like unicorn poop or something. But... I cleaned it all down so you can actually see what's happening. So I have to take this out and then drill, I don't know if I'll do two or three holes, depends on the diameter of the screw I use, in from there and I'll set that up on the mill again as well. I'm just uh, thinking, making, making absolutely certain before I take any of this apart that I've done all the machining I need to do in this setup because this is all set up perfectly and the DRO is all set up for the right measurements. So. I want to make sure I've done everything I need to before I take it apart. So I finished making this little fly cutter and it came out 
pretty good apart from one thing which anyone who knows about these has probably spotted already um, I got the little bolts on the wrong side so that should really be that way around and I think the reason for that is because you want it cutting so the the edge of the tool is on the center line here and you want that to be going that direction which means I have this backwards so uh, I think the other reason for that is because all the force is on this edge you want that side of the tool up against the hard shoulder and the other side just clamped in place with the little screws so it'll still work it just means I have to run the mill in reverse which luckily on my mill it, it runs forward or reverse either speed is uh, we'll, we'll do all the speeds in forward and reverse so it'll have to cut that direction which is annoying but workable so the finish on the milled bits isn't so great I suppose if I was really fussy I could file all that down and make it nice but I want a tool I can use so the idea would then be this can be used to take the two thou I need to take off the front of this and the reason this needs to be so small is because it's down inside this this casting and you've got all these bosses and things in the way so you need something small enough that it's going to be able to swing over that without hitting those so I guess the next step is grind up a tool which I'll have to think about exactly how that works because I've got this backwards um, they're normally the opposite way around to lathe tools I think uh, they cut on the other face so I guess I'll just grind something up and I'm going to do a lot of practice before I go anywhere near that but this is all turned up and it's a nice fit in the 16 mil uh, collet there so yeah it's a pain I did it the wrong way around but um, it was quite fun to make so I can always make more tested it out with a flat piece of aluminium and I just ground a cutter um, I just basically ground it with the same sort of relief you'd use for a lathe tool it's just ground the opposite way around um, and it comes out okay I probably need to practice with the speeds and things you can it's not perfectly smooth you can feel a little bit of off, off the cuts there but um, it seems to be working so I practice with the fly cutter a little bit on this aluminium plate and I do get a pretty good finish you can see the the marks in it but you can't really feel them you, you just can um, one thing I've learned is I don't think my mill is perfectly trimmed because if you cut uh, with the tool going this way it does a clean pass if you cut going this way it cuts going on the forward edge of the tool and then it starts cutting on the back as well so I believe that means that the mill isn't isn't completely level uh, or isn't completely trammed so even though that works I don't really feel happy having to run this tool backwards I think for this it's okay because it's such tiny cuts there's not a lot of force on it um, but I've got plenty of that steel bar so I'm going to make another one and I've already started actually I have done the machining part on the lathe anyway and that kind of shows that's the finish I get now running the lathe at the top speed with the carbide tooling it's very smooth I wish I'd known this before I'd done the pins on the back of the, the shackle pins there because they would have been nice and smooth um, not that that really matters because a, a little bit of roughness there is good because it help, helps keep the oil in but the other thing I realized is I actually have a 20 mil collet uh, so the last one I made was 16 this one I made 20 on the shaft because I've got a collet to fit and it'll still fit through the the um, the lathe spindle so that saved a little bit of mach machining um, but I'm probably going to leave the milling part till tomorrow. Luckily, it's a long weekend here because of a holiday. So uh, all I have to remember is 
basically make the mirror image of this. And now that I've got one to copy and copy it the other way around, I should get it right. So that was two dumb things I've done this week. Uh, first was that, and then second, getting those pins muddled up, or not having the tube the right length. So making progress, I'm still not sure, even with this, that my machining is good enough and accurate enough that I can take two thou off here. Um, one, it's really hard for me to measure it. I don't know the best way to do that, and I don't know if I trust the the DRO. I think the DRO is accurate, um, but really I'd want to sort of take a tiny amount off and sort of sneak up on it, but that would mean setting it up and taking it out of the mill every time. So I'm not sure if I can set it up somehow. Really what I'd want to be able to do is, is have an indicator set up so that you can... Um, indicate on it each time because this will this will show me really accurately the two thou that I need uh, so I'd have to have a think and see if there's some way I could do that but I'll make another one and I'll do some more practicing with it I think that surface finish is probably good enough because um, most of the time it's not actually rubbing on that or anything so yeah it's been a fun day though actually making something with all this, these tools and things I have. So I think it's kind of one of those things you do when you you start getting tools to start machining things, you start machining your own tools, uh, which is quite cool.